Okay, so I pulled apart the display from the record owner 1992, and I started putting the switches out. Like last time when I did the 1991, when I was doing this row here, there's a gun underneath an IC, which I've also popped out, and it has this little cover here um, as part of the actual connector, which I've pulled apart, as you can see here. I was hoping that it'd be hollow underneath. It isn't. Now the other one I did, um, you can actually, once you took the chip out, you could just about get to all the pins to desolder the switches. But on this one here, you can't. It's all, you know, that's it. It's it's solid. So I'm going to have to desolder this socket in order to get to the um, switches, which is quite a pain. Um, really not great. It, it, I can get to it from this side, but yeah, it's, it's just one of the things I would have preferred not to have to do. So, I thought I'd warn you about that. Um, yeah. Alright, so I managed to solve my little problem here without desoldering the whole uh, socket. Because I just carefully cut down each side with a knife and the pair of cutters to try and nibble it through for when I got closer to the actual board. And I just got these tweezers here and just worked work way underneath it. And just basically just made it. Um, split all up one side, then I was just able to fold it over and it snapped off. So um, that's the piece that was in the center before. So um, obviously, this top piece there is now looks gonna slop around, it's not gonna be a fix or anything anymore, but yeah, who cares? Um, maybe I'll put it on or a bit of glue or something, hold it on place. But um, so now I can actually get to those center pins there to do solder those other uh, switches. So that's that problem sorted out. Right, so I thought I'd just show desoldering some of these switches. Um, and of course the one I'll just get to now as I start recording is going to be a tricky one because the legs are bent over. That's awesome, isn't it? Right, well, let's just try and get this straightened out. Come on. Ouch. It snapped off. That's not helpful. This one's going to make me sad. <laughs> right, anyway. So basically what I'm doing here is just um, basically heating it up and wiggling it off a little bit and trying to get the rest of the solder out. Okay, so that one's just come out. Though their leg broke on that one. Because they've been bent over. On the harder ones, that one. Uh, yeah, so it's been a lot of fun trying to get these out. There's so many switches, anyway. <laughs> the later models don't have as many switches, which is uh, <coughs> certainly a good thing. <coughs> so I've got a whole bunch of switches which actually work. So I'm probably going to pull one of these apart and do an autopsy on one. Autopsy on one. I pulled them apart before when I was doing the um, all the broken ones on the 991 or 1991, <coughs> and um, to show what the the broken ones look like inside. <coughs> but it'd actually be nice to see what a non-broken switch looks like inside to see what the difference is. So I, th I might just do that. You know, I've got a few here to play with, so why not? You know. I think there's only two switches out of this whole lot, which are actually 40. Um, there's no point giving them to someone or selling them or anything like that as replacements because you might as well just replace the whole lot. If you're going to do this, just replace them. It's not worth um, you know, putting old switches in. You know, Not really. Because you're just risking it failing anyway. You know, it's just no point. Come on, let you come. So I mean, this came out easy enough, you know. It's it's just time consuming. So here's my bag of new switches, which say are not exactly the same, but they're close enough to work, which is the uh, good part about it. So, uh, but yeah, as I was saying before, <coughs> get one of these things. Well worth it. Well worth. It. I mean, you could probably do the same thing with a normal soldering iron, actually, but <coughs> you have to clean the holes out afterwards. On <coughs> we did all this. You know, it's just out and the holes are clear, you know, down the mess around. 
somewhat easier. And these with these sold are easy if I put some more fresh sold on first. But I'm not really too worried. They come off easy enough, as you can see. A bit of a technique to it. And um, this technique I've figured out when I was doing the last one. You know, but it's uh, just side to side, a little bit here, a little bit there, and then just fall out. You know, it's just dead easy. No struggle at all. Just time consuming. So I'm going to stop recording this because you get the idea. If I can push the button. Alright, let's put some switches in. I've got one in already. Let's turn my fan on because it's a bit smoky because of the flux. So sorry about the noise, but I need to do this. So I put some flux with this pin on all the legs of these switches here and all the all the holes so far. So I'm just going to pop them through the holes. And get the solder like so, and just get it seated. Make sure it's flat. To the other side. Okay. Need to put enough uh, heat onto it to allow the um, flux to work. But um, to get it a little bit more solder on that one. It's not flowed right through. Still not flowed right through. It's being stubborn, stiffen this up. Just for the sake of completeness. straight feel like they work okay so I've got to do this for all of these switches <laughs> it's a bit tedious but it's um, the way it is also I can't put too much heat on these switches for too long because otherwise it can damage the inside when I did the um, 1991 previously um, I had a switch, I installed it and it didn't work. It basically appeared to fail. I think I probably put too much heat onto it trying to get the, a good solder joint because I hadn't put flux in everything at the time. So, uh, I'm a little bit more careful about that now. Just a little bit anyway. So, you see. I'll make sure which is actually seated properly. Okay. So far, so good. That's four on. So um, I shall carry on with this. I don't want to do the whole thing because it would be really boring watching me do all that. But you get the idea. Okay, so I've got the switches all installed. Now, next thing I'll do is just double check that the actual alignment is okay. So I'll just um, get it sort of in there and uh, put the screws in and just make sure that they actually seem to be okay. Um, this can be a little bit tricky because you've got to kind of work out which of the multi many, many switches um, are the ones which are causing the problem. So you might have you know a few which are close to the edge, but it might not actually be those ones which are problems, the ones the other end which are problems. So anyway, it's just one of these things. So I just pop these in. And it probably can't really do this alignment perfectly until I get the actual um, button tops on. But uh, this will be if I don't do it up too tight just yet, just uh, a little bit of tension. So it'll still move slightly. Okay, so 
these ones here a little bit towards the bottom. So I can slide this up a bit. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'll try to be really careful when I was putting them all in, trying to make sure they're all straight and not twisted at all and that sort of thing. And so I think I've got them better this time than I did last time I did it. Um, this one here is looking a little bit low. Let's go any button. Doesn't matter which one it is. And I might have to go through and it's got this little burr on the edges there from the gate when I make them. Um, I'll have to go through and deburr all the edges of the buttons and stuff like that. But that's looking a bit low, but that's okay. It's it's working all right. Um, look for a high one. This one looks a little bit high. Yeah, that's fine. That'll be alright. So um, I'll screw this down properly. And uh, hopefully I can call it pretty much done. I just got to do all these buttons, clean them up a little bit, a little bit dirty. Give it a bit of a clean. Take this little burr off. So if you look on the edge of there, you can see a little lump on the side. That's, that's called the gate when I make it in injection molding. It just needs to be trimmed off so it doesn't catch. And if I get any of these holes which are catching, then I might as well trim the back of those off with a knife as well, because it's only a uh, cast housing. So it's um, you can actually just actually scrape it with a knife and it'll take it, it burrs off the back of it. And that's just fine, so what I did with the other one when I did it. So uh, we shall uh, carry on from there. So I've got the counter back together. I've glued all these little buttons back on again. And as you can see, trigger. Uh, input A is triggering just fine and I'm running it currently off my Rubidium standard um, and I'm letting everything stabilize right now it's only been on for about half an hour this has been on for about probably 15 minutes so it needs a bit more soak time yet uh, but the uh, frequency is already fairly good um, it's stabilized quite well it's, it's only changed whether that is 3 millihertz is it yeah, 30 millihertz uh, in the past five minutes or so. So it's, it's fairly stable now, but uh, it's you know, not quite there. I might have to tweak the uh, OCXO, but I'm going to wait until it's been on for at least an hour before I can do that. Make sure it's definitely stabilized properly and uh, go from there. But yeah, one successful fix. That's all working good. Um, same thing if I do the uh, channel C input. Same deal, it's working fine. Also it has the uh, push the right button helps. Also it has the uh, 1.3 gigahertz input possibility there but I'm not really sure I need that but it'd be handy. So yeah as you can see it's fairly stable now, it's not changing my very much, it's still not perfect, it's actually coming down a lot now, but um, you can see it's still drifting downwards slightly, so it might actually get there once it's been on for long enough and stabilised properly, so, uh, but yeah, it works, and that's the main thing, so I picked this up for a really good price, um, probably about the quarter of the price they normally go for online, uh, the 40 ones. So I've got a really good price for this, so it's, um, and that's fixed, and it's working nicely, and I'll say, that was quite a surprise that these buttons were actually working still, like this one is still intact. So, let's quickly pull them apart. Let's see what the inside looks like when they're not broken. get it apart without breaking it in the first place. Come on.
this is going to be a pain, it doesn't want to come out. Right, let's force it a bit more. The cat's hungry, as you can probably hear. It's a very insistent cat, that one. Oh, come on, come out. Let's just force it. What the hell? Okay, right. So, this is what a non broken one looks like. So, it is inside, which hopefully you can see. Nice and intact. Nothing funny there. Like the other ones, I found like a post sticking out inside the contact and stuff like that. So, there's the uh, post there. Hopefully I can get the lighting on it a bit better. So this is what an intact one is supposed to look like. The outside is rubbery. It's not hard. Okay, so this is a rubber contact. See that squashing? Hopefully. Focus. There you go. See it squashes. Alright. So this is the difference between the ones which are broken. Oh, I've now lost it. I've dropped it. It's gone. <laughs> the floor of doom has, has captured that one. So that's the difference between a working one and a stuff one. The working ones are still rubbery and it's obviously a conductive rubber and uh, yeah so um, if anybody needs these um, yeah just buy new ones don't bother risking it I mean, that one there is failing this one has failed um, this one feels a little bit weak you know I mean yeah that there that one feels a bit sloppy so yeah I mean you can't really they're too old it's just the way they are so that's what they're supposed to be like is a solid one piece of rubber not uh, lots of bits and no plastic it's actually just rubberized so right that's it catch you later have a good one